one, please don't show that to your parents. To create the animation you have just seen, we are going to start by creating the layers. Most of the layers will be automatically set up when you solve your camera tracking, but I'm going to skip this part, so if you are interested in learning more about camera tracking, you can click on this video in the corner. So after solving the, the camera tracking, you will have this uh, foreground and background. This one is created later. And if you're going to the, the foreground layer, you can see that the background is set in the view layer. If you right click, it's set as holdout. I will put a reference picture later. For instance, here this cube uh, has a material which is uh, holdout. You, you can check here the surface. And if you go to render, <coughs> what you can see is that it's making everything as transparent blocking the, the light that goes through and everything at uh, the view. So that, this is the way that the background is set. That means, for instance, if in the background we put this table here, um, the table won't be visible, which is great, because we, we already have the, the real view of the table. But if I put a, another object, let's say a bee or whatever thing that is behind the table, I won't see that object as well. So the fake table in the background would work as a holdout and, and just block the view of that object behind, which is what would really happen if that a picture, instead of being flat, if it was a 3D object, then you would not see behind. That's why we have to set it as, or it's automatically set as a holdout. Then this is a plane. This plane is used only for the transparency, because when the water is floating through here, I want to see what is actually below, which is, in this case, uh, the plane. Like I said, it's a flat picture, but if you thought about 3D, you would have a plane here. So you, you need to replicate this, so you can uh, put this plane, which would will work only as an environment uh, plane. I only want the indirect only, and that's because I don't really want the, the, the color of the plane. I already have a plane here, which is the, the, the background, uh, the, the footage. But what I want is the indirect light that is bouncing after the plane through the water. Uh, I want this to be visible in, in the water, so that kind of light, that, that's the indirect light. And then that would be for the foreground layer. If you go to the background layer, then you can see that you have the foreground set as uh, indirect only. I would set it to indirect only because I don't really want to get to, to use any colors or any objects from the foreground layer other than the shadows. And the shadows are only the indirect light. So, for instance, if you have um, if you if you were taking the, the direct light as well, when the the light is the light source is bouncing a table and you would get the direct diffuse because of the first bounce, but the shadows are always the second bounce, so it would hit the table, and then the second bounce would hit the, the floor, for instance, and that would be the shadow. And that's why we want only the, the end direct. And with the plane, we don't want to have any visibility because the shadows won't be interact with the, with the plane. So if you go to the plane layer, which is the environment floor in my case, I don't want it to interact with absolutely anything. I want the, the, the foreground to use the plane for indirect light, but I don't want the plane to be affected by anything. It's just uh, actually, if you wanted to make it more realistic, you should also combine the lights with the uh, with the real foreground and well, a bunch of stuff. But to make it simple, take a picture of the floor of the uh, in the floor of your living room and then use it as a material. Here you have a reference of how the the layers should see each other. So if you are in the foreground, this is the way you should see the background and environment and the rest. So now let's quickly add the shadow catches and the objects of the scene. In this case, I'm going to add some well, one table so that it can hide and block the water from going through and also the visibility of the water so you won't be able to see the water that is actually pretending to be below or under the table. The same upon with this machine in the floor so I, the water won't go through the, the machine. And it's very important to put some limits in the walls, uh, like in, in this case, the, the back wall, so the water won't go past this, this wall. Then it's also important to add the point light, which in this case was very easy to, to locate because it's in this uh, position, and I tried to match it with, uh, with the back wall, the, the small one that I've added, and it's approximately in there. Then uh, something that is coming with the camera tracking setup, which is, a, is the floor. And in this case, the floor has to have a hole, but before creating the, well, adapting the floor, which by the way comes automatically with the tr setting the tracking scene, remember to put all those objects if you go to properties, then you have to mark this uh, shadow catcher for all of them. So you have the machine floor, you have the, the table, you have the wall limit, and of course the floor, well, the ground. So all of those are uh, shadow catchers, and that means the only color that you will see in those objects are the shadow reflections. 
but remember that they were also set as hold out from the foreground, which means if there is something beyond them, they will block it. So in this case, that's why we had to make this hole because otherwise, the, if the flat, if the ground is all flat and there are no holes, you would not be able to see through it. So to create a hole, it's actually quite simple. In my case, I've just uh, played a bit with a with a cylinder, but you can just add another hole that you want to create. Uh, you make it small. You pull it up. You go to uh, edit mode. You remove the face, and then you can play a bit with. Uh, well, making it narrower, then maybe adding some loop cuts around and and changing a bit the shape of it. If you make if you enable the proportional editing, you can easily well, adapt everything and just add some randomness to it. And that's not very important because we will add later some noise. Play around with maybe uh, selecting these and then selecting uh, with the proportional editing some random, and then you can randomly uh, move the, all these uh, vertices. It's better if you just select some random uh, here, here, there, and around there. And then you can also actually uh, move here the 3D cursor and not don't, do not move them in Z, so Shift Z, and then we have a kind of ugly but working uh, hole. Then you add some you add the solidifier <coughs> modifier. Actually, we can also add the cell fracture uh, add-on, which would could help you to to go to here. And then with cell fracture, you can create some floor and then uh, fracture it, and and you would be able to use that as a hole. In my case, I, I just prefer to keep this one. Then once we have the, this hole, we try to put it closest to the surface. We take this plane and we would use a boolean modifier and use a, as a difference this one here in my case i've done that already i don't need to do it twice but if i were to you would see that the hole is getting bigger okay so then i'm removing the, the boolean but well just apply it in your case and then you will have the hole now that comes the, the more interesting part which is setting up the fluids for that we're going to create first of all a domain so we add a cube make it a bit not so high because it doesn't really need to be that big and a bit wider so if you go to orthographic mode and then camera view you can see that it's actually long enough and it's covering both sides then just uh, remember to apply the scale of the domain and then just set a fluid to the domain then this is actually liquid and it set it goes set to liquid as well already and then it seems it got my any previous um, simulation baked so let's go Final, make, escape, and then let's go to modeler again. Then we need to, uh, it's important to remember to put some collision for the liquid to not go through. In my case, I've created a less detailed floor and more shallow so it gets filled faster. Then also remember to put some um, collisions here in the table. In this, the way to do it is, is go to the physics tab and then fluid, enable uh, effector, and also collision then <clears throat> surface thickness and the same with the new floor that i've created and then we go to fluid and fluid and then to effector and then here in effector what we have is for some reason it's in wireframe let's just go back to texture and <clears throat> actually it's disabled for the camera because i don't want this whole this part to be rendered then we go back to physics and this is just the collision it's planar the surface thickness i was having some good results with 4, but you can just play around with this value if it still goes through the floor just uh, increase this number once you have this set what you need to create is a source for the water so you make it I'm just creating a circle edit mode and F to fill then just rotate it in X axis a bit so the water will go a bit more horizontally and just move it here then it's time to add the fluid flow and this is just liquid inflow and just some sampling subsets that will help and it's planar that's important because it's flat and you didn't add any any volume to the to this and some emission i it, it would look good for me with 1.2 but that depends on the size of your scene and also uh, any other element that you have there so you can play around with these values now it's time for me to test it so i'm going to bake the domain you will notice that unless it's set to final you will be able to stop the simulation or to press escape and then you can resume it afterwards you can also see that some of the water is actually going through. 
but that's not really important probably because of my geometry it's not perfect and it has some holes or whatever that, that can be fixed by you I wouldn't worry too much because the water is actually going to the surface which is what I really wanted but that's gonna be enough for us to just have the first impressions and you should create the mesh you bake the mesh that they can turn, uh, tune up these values a bit upper once uh, for the final simulation so it will look much better not so um, sharp then you can just uh, shade smooth and it looks better, much more like water and this is it for the water uh, just turn up the, the values free this data increase the resolution something that is also interesting is to increase the minimum amount of adaptive steps so it will look more realistic just put it to three four five just in my simulation it didn't look that good but you can just play with these values here so what i've done here was to load the scene that already has a simulation baked in the domain i increased the resolution divisions and the time scale because the water was going too fast i wanted i preferred that to be slower than uh, something like I, I wanted less splashes of the water so i reduced this value here and some other uh, like increasing the resolution of the mesh so it doesn't look so steppy so steep and, and so like sharp and some other parameters that you can increase small thing and, and so on and just set this to final the same with the with the mesh set it to final and just choose a folder to bake the simulation and that will be it in regards to the materials so let's go uh, i forgot sorry to mention that we had to add this plane you have to also put the bully the boolean uh, with um, with a hole so it has this hole here but that's actually not that important it's just for the water to have some once it's transparent and, and it goes outside if you come here for instance when you come here you can see that when you go to bake this frame it doesn't it didn't finish yet but you can see that the floor is visible through the water and that's because of the environment plane that i added and the layer setup that we made at the beginning that's just because of this floor here so you just put any floor with the texture of the real floor that it's matching actually the, the real so leaving that aside let's just go to the some of the some of the important parts which are in this case the hole so let's now go to see how how to create this kind of irregular uh, displacement for the for the hole to make it look a bit more realistic so let's just take a look at the at the shading if I, you go to this tab and what i've done was to for the color to add a color ramp that actually i didn't really use i, I just wanted to um, well, I was thinking about using it, but you, you could play around with this. And you, what's really important here is the noise texture. So if you add the, in the preferences, and then the node uh, Wrangler uh, here, you would see that if you control shift, you will see how it's applied the, the noise texture in the material. You, let's just put it down a bit. And you see that it's not irregular, it has some dark and, and white areas. And what it means is that this part uh, will affect if you put it in height and you add a bump you will use black and white areas to displace this, this texture here so that's the result what's really important here is the displacement then i added this mix shader that it's only just darkening a bit everything if you were to put the factor all the way up you will see that it's going darker then about the environment floor you will you see here that i just added the picture the, the image and i put it into the base color and also the, the important part is the, the domain, which is actually the water. All these the materials, you have to add them here in this tab and then just click on the new material. Then we go to the water. Let's just go to the camera view. Something that is important for the water is that the transmission should go all the way up because uh, the, the water is transparent. And then the index of refraction is 1.333. Then something that you can play around. Also the roughness, it should go all the way down. And other than that, something that you can add to improve a bit the, the color of the water and the quality is just press this droplet here. You can select a bright area and then just um, it will help the, the water to get some color. In my case, I just try to, to select the color and then just put it a bit brighter because I don't really I don't want that to influence that much. So this will be all for the materials. In case you want to tweak a bit the values for the water simulation, also feel free to play around with these values here in case you have some questions or you want to share your experience, you can comment below. And if you like the tutorial, subscribe so you can find some other tutorials of this kind.